So let's jump to number 19. That one looks a little interesting. Uh, 32 is not a perfect square. 162 is not a perfect square. So maybe we could factor out a GCF. What could we pull out of the 32 and the 162? At the very least, we could pull out what? They're both even numbers or even terms. You could pull out, anybody? A 2, right? So let's pull out a 2 and see what happens. Pull out a 2. We're going to have a 16 left over, and that's great because that's a perfect square term. And 162, that's going to be 162 divided by 2 is 81, or you could say 2 times 81 will give you the 162. And, of course, we still have the k squared right there. So, anyways, it's still equal to 0. And on the inside of the uh, parentheses, we have the perfect square terms now that we could use a shortcut on. But before doing that, because it's an equation, and only because it's an equation, we are able to do anything we want as long as we do it to both sides. So I could divide by 2 to get rid of that 2 that you factored out, and divide by 2 over here. We'll have the new equation, 16 minus 81, k squared equals 0. And now we truly have the difference of two squares. 16 is a perfect square, 81 k squared is a perfect square term. So when I do the square root, let me do my answer format here. When I do the square root of 16, that's 4. When I do the square root of 81k squared, that will be 9k. So you put 9k right here and 9k over here. And of course, one has to be a plus, one has to be a minus. That's the only way the middle term actually cancels out. And this is your new factored form equation. And all you need to do now is split them and solve. So you have the 4 plus 9k equals 0. You have the 4 minus 9k equals 0. Let's solve both of them. The one on the left, I'm going to subtract 4. You're going to have 9k equals negative 4. And then final step would be to divide by 9 on both sides. k equals negative 4 ninths. And the other one, since it's the same binomial just with the sign change, it's going to be the same answer, k equals positive 4 ninths. If you wanted to save some space, you could technically write your answer as k equals plus or minus 4 ninths. That represents both this guy over here and this guy right here. Jumping to number 20, what's the problem here? You have a fraction. How could you get rid of a fraction? Multiplying everything by the denominator. So if you multiply everything by 121, you'll be rid of that fraction. So 121 times t squared is 121 t squared. Uh, 121 times 64 over 121, that cancels out. So you have minus 64. 0 times 121 is still 0. So what we have now is a perfect square um, equation, and it's really the difference, difference of two squares, because you could do the square to 121t squared, and you could do the square to 64. So let's jump to our factored form, answer format. And what is the square root of uh, 121t squared? 11t. 11t. Sounds like a weird number. Okay, and what's the square to 64? 8. Of course, one's plus, one's minus, 11, t, and then an 8 right there. And now from here, we're going to apply the zero product property, split them and solve. So it's going to be 11, t plus 8 equals 0, and also 11, t minus 8 equals 0. So uh, we're just going to solve by subtracting 8 on both sides. We're going to have 11, t equals negative 8. Final step would be to divide it by 11 on both sides, giving you your final answer, t equals negative 8 elevenths. There's my answer. However, on the other one, you could show your work, but we know it's the same binomial, just with a different sign, so we're going to end up with the same answer, just with a different sign. So t equals positive 8 elevenths. You guys good? All right. There is a different way to tackle all these problems, okay? Um, 
And before we do that, let me just push this to the side. And let's, let's look at the simplest type of equation, x squared equals 9. Ladies and gentlemen, using mental math, using mental math, what could your answer be right here? A 3, right? x equals 3. Why is that? Because 3 squared gives you 9, right? But guess what? It could also be a negative 3. Because negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3, that also gives you a positive 9, right? So I'm about to jump ahead, right, to teach you another skill. That because it's an equation, you could apply a square root. Because the square root will eliminate the square. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side. But you need to put a plus minus in front of your answer, which is 3. So right there, yeah, the answer could be positive 3, and the answer could be negative 3. That's why it's plus minus 3. Do we understand that? So the, the point I want to get across to you guys is that you could apply a square root, and you could apply a square root as long as you don't forget about this symbol. Now you could do the square root on any equation as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So with that said, let's go back to the problem that we just did. So yeah, same deal. If you want to get rid of the fraction, multiply everything by 121, and you get this red equation, right? Now check this out, guys. I want to take this red equation, 121t squared minus 64. I want to take a different path, all right? I want to add 64 to both sides. So imagine that. If I added 64 to both sides, I would end up with the equation 121t squared equals 64. If I were to add 64 here, it'd cancel it out with the negative 64. And if I add 64 over here, I'd have 121t squared equals 64, correct? So let me just do this on the side, equals 64. Now, why would I do that? This is just like a, a different road to take to the same place. If I have 121t squared equals 64, and I know that I could do the square root here and the square root there, as long as I put a plus minus in front of the other side, then I'll get an 8 right here, right? And what do I get on the left side? What is the square root of 121t squared? 11t. And there's an equal sign right between them. So the only other step I'd have to do is divide by 11 and divide by 11. So t equals positive and negative 8 elevenths. So it's just a different road to the same place. Notice we have the same answers, right? Over here we use the zero product property. Oh, actually we, we use the shortcut of difference of two squares. We took the square root of both and we got this answer format. And then we use the zero product property to split them and solve. You're going to have to take the square root anyway. So if you have the square root of the left side, the square root of the right side, you get straight to that answer, divide by 11, you get to the same exact answer. It's just a different road. So I'm giving you more options. I hope I'm not confusing anybody with this. But like, um, let me see, is there any other one we did right here? Yeah. On this guy over here, um, we factored out the GCF going back to number 19, we factored out the GCF of 2, and then we had 16 and 81. At this point, I could have moved the, 80, the minus 81k squared, I could have moved it to the other side. All right, let me just show you that. If I go plus 81k squared plus 81k squared, you get a new equation that says 16 equals 81k squared. Let me write this on the side just to show you a different way of looking at it. So we'd have 16 equals 81k squared. And what could we do to this equation now? Apply a square root. That's right. Apply a square root on both sides, right? As long as you remember that your answer is going to have a plus minus in front of it. So you're really going to have the equal sign right here. The square root of 81k squared is 9k. So your final step would be to divide by 9 and divide by 9, so you get k equals plus or minus 4 ninths, which is the same exact answer that we had before. So if you don't like this new method, stick with the old method, which is technically today's new method anyway. Um, difference of two squares, 
and factoring, splitting, and solving using that method. Um, but look at number 23, for example. Is this a perfect square term? No. Is this a perfect square term? No. So maybe you do want to get it on the same side, or you could even mess with the equation itself. I have H's on both sides. I could actually divide both sides by a single H, right? What I do to one side, I do to the other. I could divide by H on both sides. What would that cause? The H's cancel out. You'll have a 48 equals 27. One cancels with one. You'll have two left, H squared. And not only that, if you look at the equation now, the 27 and the 48, there's something else uh, in common right there that we could divide both sides by. What would it be? If we divide both sides by 3, you'd end up with 9H squared equals, what is that, 16? And once again, right here, you could apply the square root on both sides. So your final answer, well, not final answer, but final equation before getting your final answer would be 3H equals 4. But don't forget about the plus or minus because whenever you apply a square root in an equation, you need the plus or minus sign right in front of it. Final step would be to divide by 3, divide by 3. So H really does equal positive 4 thirds or negative 4 thirds. So that's why we put the plus or minus right there. So that's your alternate way of doing it by applying a square root. When you apply a square root, remember to put a plus or minus in front of there. Now the way the book actually wants you to practice doing this one would be to subtract 48H and make a, making it equal to 0. So the book would want you to, to subtract 48H, subtract 48H, get in this new equation, and then you could pull out the GCF, and the GCF of both of these would be a 4 and an H. If I pull out a 4 and an H, what's going to be left on the inside? 9H squared minus 16. And this section, the difference of two squares, is all about having the difference of squares. So right here you would use the factor format. And what would we have in the first parenthesis? we'd have the square root of that, which is 3h with the 4 and 3h with the 4, where you have 1 plus and 1 minus, okay? Now, what about this uh, 4h out here? Let's just bring it down. Now, the zero product property says that if you have, if you have uh, something times something, it equals zero. In this case, something times something times something equals zero. Each one of them could be zero. So you'd have the 4H equals 0, you'd have the 3H plus 4 equals 0, and the 3H minus 4 equals 0. And if you solved each one of them, this cancels out and you'll get H equals 0. Uh, over here, this guy would be uh, H equals a negative 4 thirds, and this one's going to be H equals positive 4 thirds. Running out of time, so I rushed through it. But yeah, if you show your work, subtract 4, subtract 4, divide by 3, you'll get this answer. Add 4, add 4, divide by 3, you'll get that answer.